shipping uh, ship in distress. Let's look at 26.3 nautical miles away. So someone hit the, um, there's a distress button right here on the radio. Someone went and hit that and uh, 26.3 miles away. <laughs> and anyone else that has digital selective calling, including um, the Coast Guard would uh, would have gotten a similar acknowledgement. Good morning. It's uh, 5.30 a.m. Over here is uh, Aeronautical. So we had dinner with uh, Chris on uh, Aeronautical, met his friend uh, Trey, good guy. Then uh, I think this Navy boat behind this power boat is sailing vessel blew away. I'm powering up the Starlink just to make it a little bit more convenient to check the weather conditions down to San Clemente Island. So we're going to roll around uh, 0800. So it'll be keel dragger, blow away, and aeronautical. Right now, there's hardly any wind, uh, at least here, here at White Cove. We think winds are going to be pretty light, and they'll probably start to fill in around 8 a.m., so most likely we'll be motoring, motor sailing for the first couple of hours to about 10 a.m. And then uh, hopefully sail after that. But we'll look at the latest weather forecast and, and see how things are shaping up there. 8 a.m. I think everybody's getting ready to roll. We'll uh, haul up anchor here. Engine's running. We'll haul up anchor. I got to stow the Starlink. And uh, first we'll pull in the snubber and then uh, we'll get moving. Adios, White Cove, adios. There's a sailing vessel blew away. Uh, under power, so he's anchor up as well. And we've got bye guys, bye guys, bye guys. aeronautical right in front of us. So we're rolling three deep to San Clemente Island. 32.2 uh, nautical miles, and it's uh, 18 after 8 a.m. These guys both have more waterline length than keel dragger, so they'll. Uh, They'll, they'll probably out motor me if uh, we get into a motoring contest. If we get into a sailing contest though, not a chance guys. We'll get a good look uh, passing sailing vessel aeronautical here. I, I'm convinced that this has to be the cleanest Beneteau uh, Oceanus 42 center cockpit in existence. Um, Chris and Carmen have done an incredible job of, um, she's been well, well maintained obviously to her life, but um, incredible just number of upgrades and everything, super well equipped. Um, Chris did the, the davits, the support, the Starlink, um, had the, the stern railings uh, extended with stainless steel railings that come out further. Um, the transom drops down, there's a nice swim ladder there. He's got, I believe, 485 watt uh, bifacial solar power panel in there. Uh, just a great boat. Passing Avalon, Hamilton Cove with the condos. These uh, moorings are, if you don't want to get any sleep whatsoever, this is a good place. Uh, next weekend, 4th of July, these will all be filled. Um, this will this all be full. Descanso is pretty full. I see a few open moorings. Descanso is this beach in between. The effing Catalina wine mixer is uh, held back there at uh, Descanso. Uh, pretty rolly there as well. It's not as bad as Hamilton. Uh, it's just open roadstead and you get a ton of boat traffic. So one concern I had on the hydrovane mount was that one of the bolts, the hex bolts, and that goes through the teak pad on the stern. The head had corroded off. So there's no head on the bolt. One, you know, obviously structurally, it wasn't gonna hold the, hold the bracket or the uh, casting on for the, for the bracket. But then the second piece of that is, look at, when we're under power and we're motoring, the stern does squat a little bit. Ignore that safety line. But look at the, um, look at that H bracket and how it's just kind of sitting in the water. So here's what these hex bolts look like. 
and uh, one of those heads it just sheared completely off. So you can see that it's all sealed. Ignored the uh, the cosmetics of the paint job. Um, I still have a little bit of work to do there. I didn't have time to do the quality job and the extra coat of paint I still want to do on it, but at least it's sealed and should keep the, the water out and everything like that, protect the teak. And that was the most important piece of work I had to get done uh, before I wanted to head out and start using the hydro vane and all that. All right, the mains are up. I don't know what's going on with this main. That looks horrible. These guys have their mains up. Oh, these guys just came charging over. It's starting to fill in a little bit, so 48, 50 degrees apparent with uh, about eight true. So we're pretty close to doing some real sailing here. It's 1030. We're gonna go ahead and put the Geno out. We might go ahead and put the Stasel out as well and see if we can get some sailing in. We're full canvas now, so we've got the full Genoa, the Stasel, main, everything's out, nothing's reefed. Sales are looking decent enough. Um, about 50 degrees apparent wind with about eight knots of true, a little on the light side. Hey guys, kill dragger here. Are you guys uh, engines off? Over. Rear nautical is. Blue is putting out the head sail right now. Okay, kill dragger's about to go engine off. Uh, Winds may be a hair light, but aeronautical, you said you're still getting five, over. Affirmative, uh, still getting about 4.95 knots. Perfect, we've got plenty of daylight here, so I, I'm good if we slow down a little bit and do some actual sailing, over. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, I'm still showing an ETA about uh, uh, so we got plenty of daylight. Yeah, roger that. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and power it down, then Kill Dragger standing by at 6 er All right, we're sailing. Engine's off. And we're doing uh, almost six knots. Hydro Vane's doing the steering. Flipping back and forth, doing its steel. Still dragging that line with the uh, rudder. Less squat now in the, in the stern. Yeah as expected. And boy, it was pretty easy to get this thing uh, kind of dialed in here. So as long as this wind holds, if we're doing six knots, uh, this is great. We've got 16.8 nautical miles to go, uh, more or less till our turns. So we have a little bit more distance than that to cover, but that, that gets us uh, kind of the corner before we start making our turn into Pyramid. We, we can't get in the motoring contest with uh, aeronautical and blue away because they've, they've just got more waterline length and uh more power but we're gonna uh we're gonna pass them we're gonna cruise past these guys and uh leave them in the horizon unless they cheat and start the engine they don't know it's a race technically it's not a race until we get in front of them <laughs> and if they pass us then it's technically not a race but uh we are drifting uh falling off a little bit so i might need to do a little bit of adjusting with the hydro vane you know these guys are going way up or we're going down and building speed uh 150 160 yeah we need to come up a little no big deal just a little uh pull the adjustment line here on the hydro vane i think Do a little micro adjustment there and see how that works. This is just perfect sailing conditions. It's a little bit light wind, but we're still moving around 
six knots, you know, give or take a couple points here or there. The hydro vane is, is doing its job. See the, uh, the vane back there? Bouncing around a little bit, keeping us on course. I think we've got enough wind to keep us rolling fairly well. Th these are the kind of passages you dream of where you can just sh shut off everything and sail for, you know, multiple hours straight on the same tack without a lot of traffic and noise and all this nonsense. Um, kind of like my favorite sailing condition. So I don't really care like whether it's gloomy out or raining or you know or anything else like this is this is ideal for me i love it yeah we're gaining on these guys i'd really like to pass them while i'm just sitting here with my arms crossed uh chilling out as we zoom by these suckers but <laughs> we may get close i may have to actually get by the wheel if uh if we start to overtake them if we're too close so we get a wind shift or something. I don't know what the uh, autopilot will do. And right now, it looks like we're coming up on them a little. Wind's died down quite a bit, so we're not really doing much at this point other than drifting and uh, listening to the sails luff. There wasn't enough wind to keep the for the hydro vane to do its job. head up a little bit so we were way off course and uh, see if we can get moving again all right we're closing in on aeronautical we're gonna ask them in all fairness I think they're getting caught up on golf scores while we're in the doldrums versus me actively sailing but Bill's gonna be a little bit harder to catch on blue away he's on the other side closer to the island all right one down we got aeronautical now we got to get blue away here so blue away caught this line of wind before we did and started running away from us so we're gonna have to really work to try and catch him uh, he's moving pretty well we'll see I'll keep uh, actively Sailing versus passively, see if we can't pick up a little bit. And actively meaning actively uh, keeping an eye on the uh, hydro vane versus just completely ignoring it and uh, trying to dial in our, our, our uh, angle of attack here as the wind's been a little fluky. Noon update. This is about what I was expecting the wind to fill in. So a little bit more consistent it's only been a few minutes since we were in the doldrum not too long but we're doing five and a half knots five knots <laughs> maybe i spoke too soon and we're seeing about seven and a half knots of true give or take with about uh 55 degrees apparent wind is how i've got uh, things set right now and it's putting us right about on course so we're beamed to blue away right now. Looks like, uh, let's see, I think there's maybe a little bit more wind coming. We're in a little bit of a lull again with 6.2 knots of true. So maybe we'll get back up, uh, back up and going again. We definitely have slowed down a little, a little over three and a half knots boat speed. Blew away, looking good. Look at this. What's happening? Hey, this isn't this a great sail? It's awesome. Light wind, but it's just super chill out. Making pretty good speed. I think you're the winner Get, of the day, though. I think you caught both of us. Yeah, I, I, I had to work to catch up with you. Well, we motored a little faster, but over the last few hours, you caught up. 
Yeah, and I'm pretty happy with this light air. Your boat's moving well. You're cheating though. You have three sail. It's 3 p.m. The wind's dying down a little bit. We're just getting in the lee of the island a little bit. Uh, Bill said somewhere around here there were some uh, Rissos dolphins, I believe. I thought I saw them. We'll keep our eyes open. Um, so maybe we'll get a spotting of some Rissos. It'd be super cool. But we're going to, we're maybe a hair under three miles from Pyramid Head. You can see this. A little bit of waves breaking over there it gets pretty shallow so we're gonna go around pyramid head take a little bit wide and then pyramid cove is on the south end here of san clemente island so a little bit of a difference here we've got uh got a little bit of wind look at this So, uh, I think we'll be protected, but as soon as we came around the south end of the island here, the wind, uh, you could see it on the water, then it started right on the nose, so it was kind of like coming out of the south, so it must have been wrapping around uh, San Clemente. Now it's, uh, there's a lot of, looks like a lot of west in it, so we'll be okay. I, I, be a little bit worried about anchoring here if there's too much south. I think we can get, um, I think we can get up in here and anchor around where we did last time, and I think that'll get us out of this. about 60 feet of water right now. It's laid down quite a bit. You can see the kelp here. And uh, Blue Way, I think, is lining up just along this uh, this wall here. So that should shadow us from the wind fairly well. We just want to get in uh, shallower and not be uh, in some bunch of weeds and stuff. We've got 300 feet of chain out and uh, 45 feet of depth. We're in the lee of the island here a little bit. Uh, still a little bit breezy here. Um, 15 knots is what I'm seeing uh, here at the anchor. So we've got SV blew away to starboard. And then uh, directly in our path as we drag <laughs> is uh, sailing vessel aeronautical. I'm satisfied with the trip over here. Super happy with how the hydrovane performed. Um, with seven knots of wind or better 10 after 6 p.m and look at this there's only two and a half knots of wind right now we've got the aeronautical water taxi service headed our way chris and trey are going to pick me up and then we'll head over to uh sv blue away got a six pack of beer so we're good to go Twenty till ten, well past cruisers midnight. Had a uh, nice dinner on uh, SV Blue Way on Bill's boat. Uh, had tacos and a couple of beers. Watched some UFC fights over Starlink. Um, called the Admiral and had a nice chat with her um, before I get ready to go to bed. Um, also courtesy of Starlink, so I was actually pleased to see that Starlink works from Pyramid Cove without having to have the priority mobile data um, additional charges for Starlink. Plan is tomorrow we're going to leave around 0600, so get up a little before that and uh, have my coffee, talk to the Admiral a little bit, and uh, then haul up anchor. And I, I think it's going to be a combination of about... Uh, Probably five hours of motoring and five hours of sailing, maybe a little bit more motoring. Um, we'll put up the main early though, so we'll be motor sailing, but I, I think it's gonna be a 
pretty long day on the water, so we're gonna go ahead and get some sleep. Have a good night. Morning. <coughs> Excuse me. It's about 6 a.m. At about 15 boats or so at anchor. Uh, quite a few came in after we did. Almost all fishing boats. Pretty calm actually last night. Calmer than I was expecting from when we came in. Sailing boat with the main up that was uh, tucked back in here. They're rolling. We're, uh, there's a great anchorage here. Um, we're gonna start the engine here pretty soon and, and uh, haul anchor and get underway. We've got about 55 miles back to Angel's Gate, back to LA Harbor. Uh, about midway, we will be uh, swinging by Catalina. It's just right on the path. Adios, Pyramid Cove, San Clemente Island. Adios. This crow flies to Catalina. It's about 30 nautical miles, just a little over 30 nautical miles to the southeast corner of Catalina Island. Cooking with Kill Dragger. Uh, no breakfast burritos this time. We're gonna do just a little uh, sausage, turkey sausage, cheese, and uh, Dave's killer bread, uh, two whole grains and seeds bread. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna burn our fingers on the burner by uh, trying to lightly toast this bread since we don't have a toaster. I'm gonna have to take a look up here pretty soon and make sure we're not running into anyone. Throw some sausage up in this mug. Let's say by your mom, pan. All right, sausage is burning. Go uh, take a look and make sure we're not gonna hit anybody now. And all clear. All right. Is it sharp cheddar cheese, little Dijon mustard, and that's our delicious breakfast. So we're a little tight at 14 degrees apparent wind angle, but we got about seven knots of wind, so we'll go ahead and put the main up. Main is up, so we're running 22 apparent, which is It'd be pretty hot to put the head sail out uh, at that angle. Although Chris has his out on aeronautical. Jenna was out, we've got 32 degrees apparent wind. Remember we were doing about 5.96, he'll see what it did to our speed. 6.4, not bad. It's light winds, but we would totally be sailing if we didn't have uh, Monday morning ahead of us and uh, with work and everything else. So my half 26 foot striper. So my uh, halfway between San Clemente Island and Catalina. Okay, what is your probably on our path? What's the problem with the boat? My engine broke down. I get it to move, and I'm in the middle of the ocean between San Clemente Island and and Catalina. All right. So, a couple of tips. One, always have a. Notebook uh, and a pen handy to write stuff down. The other thing is, if you hear something on the radio, you can use uh, audio recording on your phone. If you want to capture it, uh, in case you can't write things down quickly enough. So we've got his, got his coordinates in here. Now let's see where this guy is relative to us. Actually, that's him. Zero, zero, 001. Let's change the icon here to a skull and crossbones. So that's where that that's where that guy's at. That's disabled. This uh, we'll zoom in a little bit. So we could head over there. Towboat's calling. They're not in any distress, so we're going to stay on our way. But if I look at this. This he's uh, four point six three degrees. Or sorry. 4.62 nautical miles, the 323 magnetic. 
so we put our waypoint in there and and uh easy to kind of keep track of where this guy's at so blue away uh let us know you know maybe uh 25 30 minutes you uh should be uh, half hour or so you should be closer and have eyes on that target let us know what you see when you get over there over I see a target off my my port bow, but I don't see the vessel yet. Yeah, they were they were just calling for a tow, so it sounded like their motor. Like I don't think they were in any distress or anything like that. And Tobo US was coordinating and had their position and everything. Um, from where I'm at right now, they're uh, about two nautical miles, just a hair over that, to my northwest. All right, you can see me looking at the disabled vessel which you won't be able to see I can see him there's a sea lion following these dolphins Vessel assist point Vicente coming in on his hot. That's off to those guys. They've bailed me out more than once. Glad they're out here. 11:30 coming up on the southeast end of the island, Catalina. There's Avalon, sun is coming out. What a beautiful day. All right, we found a bottle. I'm curious if there's a uh, message in it or not. Let's... Could just be rubbish. It's corked and it's floating high. Is there a message in that? There could, that could be a message in there. All right, we got it. Let's see what we got. All right, here's our message in a bottle. Hello, Beachcomber. Would that be Mr. or Mrs. Beachcomber? How's your day going? Catch any fish? Find any gold while beachcombing? Well, I am doing a study on the ocean currents by launching these wine bottles. Of course, you have to empty them first. That's the fun part. Then toss them off the rickety old sailboat. Would you mind letting me know where you found this message in the bottle? I sure appreciate it. If you write back to me where you discovered the bottle, I'll tell you a story that goes along with the whole message in a bottle thing. Thanks for helping me out. All right. We better look at our... Here's our coordinates. 33 degrees, 26 decimal, 423. 118 degrees, 16 decimal, 326. Somewhere around there, we started motoring a little bit, but in this general vicinity here between Catalina, um, about, uh, I'm gonna say about eight miles off the island, and about 15 miles back to the mainland. Jenny's out, here we go again. This is nice. Set up on the hydro vane. We got that over to one. Pull the rudder pin out, or the uh, shaft pin out, not the rudder. Don't lose the rudder. Pull that pin out. Then we'll uh, try and get on course here. Lock the wheel. Back to sailing under the command of the trusty Hydrovane.
I'm watching this hydro vane leaning over pretty hard to keep us on course, which means we probably have a little bit of weather helm. We'll drop the traveler just a hair. Look at that, it's not leaning as much. Six knots plus, uh, maybe six and a quarter or so. About 11 knots, 11.2 knots of true wind. So we're cooking right along. And we're gonna try to keep, to, whoa, he's whipping around. Okay, now we're just gonna try and uh, keep to see how this works. We've got that ship in the shipping lanes. And so we got the rudder over hard to starboard. Lock that in. We get kind of beam to wind right now, which is not exactly where I want to be. So heave to you, you you backwind your head sail and you turn your wheel hard over the opposite direction. I guess I've got the we got the, the helm hard to starboard and this was uh, on the starboard side. Kind of a piss poor job of heaving too. But we stalled the boat, which is what I wanted to do. We're gonna let this ship pass the shipping lanes and then we'll start sailing again. See the slick right here a little bit? Okay, we're just about ready to uh, turn to port and start sailing again. Uno momento. Let's uh, let's do this. Unlock the helm. This is the helm lock. We're gonna go hard over to port. We're gonna jive all this nonsense. Maybe. Might take a second or two. Their head sails filling up with wind. The main's gonna jive next. It'll come across. Pretty soon, five, four, three, two, one, and jiving the main. There we go. It's Jawa, I don't know if that's a uh, Star Wars character taking a leak or what. CPA 2.59 miles, I'm good with that. All right, so we successfully dealt with the um, with the ship, the uh, pissed Jawa. Basically, I you know I had a couple of options. Um, I couldn't come up as high as I would have liked to, just because I would have been going into the wind at that point uh, to maintain the CPA. Um, like generally, I like to stay a couple miles away from these guys, and they absolutely have right away over sailboats when they're sh in the shipping lanes. Um, I could have went down and uh, that would have meant a um, couple things. One, going further off course, which probably wouldn't help, but also um, I would have had to have gone way down to stay out of his way. And I would have been starting to head the same direction he was, so uh, I could have been running a parallel course with him for a while. So this particular case, standing off, heaving to, Letting him pass by, I think, was the right call. Winds went up to 16 right as I was pulling the Geno in. That took a little bit of work, so sorry I didn't get that on film. Stasel and Maine, Traveler dropped. We'll sail like this. We still have about eight miles to go to Angel's Gate. If I were gonna be sailing for a while, I'd be thinking about reefing. Um, we're not going to do that since we're kind of on the home stretch, about seven miles from Angel's Gate. So what we're going to do is I let the main sheet out a little bit. So I got the travel drop to get the head sail and you can see um, we got a little bit of a heel, but we're mostly on our feet. We slow down a little bit to five and a half. So we're bleeding. We're bleeding some juice off our main right now, which is good. We're still doing five and a half. 
but it's pretty chill and it's pretty comfortable. So we'll just stay on this course. The Mola Mola right there. Got about 17, 18 knots true right now. And we're about uh, four miles and some change from the gate. We're on port, we had a guy coming up on starboard, so we went ahead, took a little change of direction. These guys are uh, reefed in. It looks like that head sail's just uh, luffing quite a bit for him. 20.3 uh, 20 knots of wind right now. Final stretch to the gate, about a mile left. Coming into the gate. Woo! Engine's running, but it's not in gear, just as a precaution. As soon as we turn around in the gate here, I will uh, put the engine in gear and head up. What an excellent sail. Pretty lively. What a blast. I'm stoked. I'll be ready for my nap soon. Got a little bit of work left ahead of us.